On our way to the fish shop, we found the multi-talented Jonathan Torrance lingering close behind, so we decided to ask him a few questions. Well, I'm here working on uh, a minor motion picture called The Breadmaker, which is like uh, a movie with the budget of porn and uh, some of the same budget kind of level. So does this uh, represent a, a shift in your career? Since the late 1980s, I've worked in uh, uh, teen television, and someone's going to eventually bust me and say, wait a minute, you're 51 years old, it's time to do something else. So I don't know that I'm shying away from TV necessarily um, by doing this film, but I just think it's time to sit at the adult's table. And what are your uh, favorite uh, drinking holes, so to speak? Uh, I've been to the ship a couple of times to see, uh, I saw Hot Nuts, and uh, I saw Gearbox last night at the uh, Grapevine playing an unplugged set, and uh, they sounded great. And other than that, I've just been kind of hanging out. I, I uh, ate at that place that burnt down. I was there the morning that it burnt down, the breakfast place. The big old cafe? Yeah. You yeah. weren't uh, responsible for them. Well, I, I don't know. I thought I was supposed to put out cigarettes on the carpet, and uh, I don't know that it was mine, but I'm just saying I was there. So I don't know. Take with you what you will. We're here with Rod and Rod and Ken. Hi, Ken. Hey, boys, what are we supposed to say here now? What are Whatever, we doing? Ken, do you want yeah, anything you'd like to add? I have, I have the one. <laughs> An interview with famed stage and screen actor Kiefer Sutherland. How would you say working on The Red Door has compared to uh, working on films, say, elsewhere in Canada or North America? It's certainly been unique. I think Newfoundland is such a unique area, such a unique province. Uh, and many people refer to it as a country unto itself, uh, and I can understand why. And with the inconsistencies in the weather that is the norm for St. John's, especially this time of year, has that um, provided any uh, any difficulty in terms of shooting? It hasn't provided us with any difficulty. Um, I mean, one of the things that you have to kind of remember is as severe as the weather is here, um, it's very dramatic. We were, we were out in Port of Bukovo and we were shooting right there on the coast, and within five hours, the ice flow came in. If you tried to do that, if you'd written that in a script and you tried to shoot that, it would cost you millions of dollars. And we got it for free. But every time, every time since I come here, boy, I tell you, I always run into the difficulty. It's one spicy cigar, boy, I tell you right now. And time keeps dragging on. I understand you from the land. <laughs> Buckheimer Styles is a self-described Southern American purist who for some reason has made St. John's his temporary home. We follow Bucky's trials and tribulations as he comes to terms with fending for himself and being enamored of the wonderful and helpful people of St. John's to whom he is constantly forced to turn to for help. From going on special assignment with our producer to Montreal to determine if a Montreal smoked meat sandwich stands to test against a plate of Chess's fish and chips, but he proves that he is a true adventurer. I've been check, <laughs> checking out the local scene. What do you think of uh, George Street? Uh, I don't think I've ever been on a street that had more bars. George Street's fantastic. Uh, I mean, we ran into each other uh, last Sunday. Um, and we were just watching a couple bands play, uh, and I remarked that it was, it's been a long time since I watched musicians just hang out and play because they love playing music. And uh, people work very hard here during the week, and the weekend is theirs, and uh, George Street is where they make the most of it. You, know? you got to tell us. Did you consume anything that may have uh, prompted you to need some bottled water? People are acting a little strange tonight, are they not, Brad? Sure, they surely were. What's this? What's this? 
Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm all right. You need mustard and milk. I just get the camera on this shit. <laughs> all right. Excuse me. I think somebody stole your mustard. No, somebody stole mustard and they just shot it all over us down there. Did somebody steal your mustard? Did somebody steal your mustard? I got the mustard from that hot dog guy way down there. He didn't know I took it though. No, I was just saying that I just got... But I, maybe it wasn't from you. Maybe it was from somebody else. So, rumor has it that you've been screeched in. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um... I woke up one morning and I had a degree uh, from the Screechers Academy on my desk. And to go downstairs and ask how I got it. And We're here with Barry Newhook, who was uh, Vallis in uh, the Bingo Robbers. And I'm just wondering uh, what you drew upon as uh, influence for the film. I went away to Toronto to try and find some work, as every Newfoundlander has a right to, because uh, I was uh, broke. And when I came home, my girlfriend left me and my dad was really ill. And uh, my girlfriend stayed in the house, so I was sort of homeless and I didn't have any money. Is this too sad? If you can just uh, let us in on what criterion you use to choose the bingo robbers as uh, you know, the feature uh, to highlight tonight for the premiere. Well, I'll tell you something. If somebody had said to me, um, design your opening night film, what would you like? I would have said, we want something new, we want it locally grown, we want it um, edgy, we want it urban, we want it young, we want it spirited, we want a good musical score. Somebody might have come up with Bingo Robbers. And that's, I mean, I looked at this film and I said, well, wait a second, we have our opening night film here. You made mention of uh, Norman Jewison um, in, in yes. the article. And, and did, did he see the film after? Um, I called Toronto to his production company and it's hard getting his assistant and got his assistant kind of pushed my way in and um, she said well you know he's in LA maybe you should call LA so I call LA and I talk to his other assistant there and I'm sort of chatting her up and she's being very polite and I go well you know I'm from Newfoundland the films from Newfoundland she goes oh my husband's from Gander oh, boom so suddenly it was like oh let me take your number oh yeah yeah well he's gonna be in town next Wednesday you should send it to him so who knows yeah yeah, I was very bold when I wrote him and said, you know, we really want you to see it, and it's important that people like you see it, and, you know, why don't you suggest to us what to do? Your grandfather, uh, Thomas Douglas, of course, was uh, was renowned and uh, and greatly responsible for bringing health care to Canada. Mm -hmm. um, when you travel throughout Canada, uh, do, you, do you see the, the positive effects that, uh, that the system has had on this country. Um, unfortunately, you've had a gov governments over the years taking money out of the national health care system and then telling the people that the health care system is not working. Well, of course, if you're not going to fund it, it's not going to work. I've watched the Canadian people actually kind of stand up and say, no, we're not going to accept that anymore. And so uh, I'm very happy, uh, not only for Canada, but for my grandfather's legacy that, that uh, Canadian people at least acknowledge how important and what a source of identity uh, the national health care system in Canada is to them. And so that's very good. Well, Kiefer, thanks a lot. It's a pleasure meeting you, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay in Newfoundland. Probably see you later on the road. Cheers. <laughs>